recorded live with little no editing. It's defense up. I'm run seven. How you doing? Today we got a hot one. This is one of the more interesting defenses I've had sent to me in a long time. It's sent to me by Abe or ABE. I'm not really sure because he uses all caps. But this one's very interesting. In fact, we talked about it with Chad. I had Pathfinder Gaming come on and, and look these over. And if you want to be a part of those conversations, you can come and watch them live on Twitch, Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. Links will be in the description. Or you could go check out the recap video, which should be posting probably before this one did. And you could, you know, hang into that one. Sometimes I leave those discussions in there. Sometimes I don't. You never know. Anyway, we grade on five different criteria. It's who you're using, their placement, their power levels, their ISOs, and what kind of mood I'm in. We're going to take our time with this one and have a little bit of fun. Shang-Chi is not big enough. We don't like gear tier 13. Let me throw on some music too while we're at this because I like to listen to some tunes while I record these. Shang-Chi is not big enough for this one. We don't like gear tier 13. It has the most cost with the least benefit. If you put it to gear tier 14, you have a huge jump in stats. It's something like every gear tier is like 3%, 2%, something like that. But then when you go from 13 to 14, you get something like a 20% jump in stats. So you really don't want to stop at 13. In fact, I'd like to see the other four members in here with purple rings just being a gear tier 12 because they're not that useful anywhere. And we have... Colleen Wing here in the blue ISO, which is kind of strange, but Shang-Chi isn't. I want to know what Abe's using to get through the skill nodes if he's not using Shang-Chi. That's kind of crazy to me. However, the ISOs are not good here. We want Shang-Chi as a raider. We want Iron Fist not as a healer. The reason we don't want Iron Fist as a healer, and I say this every single time, the counters that go into this team use heal block and it becomes ineffectual to make him a healer. So you might as well have him putting out vulnerables with either Raider or Skirmisher. Fortifier on Luke Cage is fine. The others are, are pretty good, but Shang-Chi should probably be a Raider. He has those AoEs that with massive damage and those crits are just amazing. And we're going to talk more about crit damage versus the standard damage boost with Striker. So we, we definitely like him as a Raider. So I'd say build up Shang-Chi. Your placement doesn't matter so much. For those of you who haven't built this team, don't worry about building the other four. They're basically useless. And you probably overspent on Colleen Wing if you're not going to build Shang-Chi any bigger. So I'm giving this one a C. It's kind of a little bit wonky with the ISOs and the power levels and stuff like that. A little bit got wasted there. Team number two is the Mercs. No Taskmaster. Now, Abe told me he understands this is a filler team. What I want to know is, how do you get Korath the Pursuer to 225 as a filler team? This is crazy expenditure of ISOs and gear and all sorts of stuff. Maybe he had Taskmaster on here, and when the Underworld team came out, he pulled Taskmaster off for that offensive team, and this is what's left over. But this is a lot of investment to be using it as a filler team. But honestly, what else are you going to do if you take Taskmaster off the team? So I guess this is it. Let's see, we've got the Merc Minions with Healer and Fortifier. Those are kind of their native ISOs. I guess that's okay. Again, that's just a huge expense taking them into the blue like that. Probably shouldn't do that for anybody else. Bullseye and Korath, the Pursuer as Strikers. That's probably the way to go if you were running Taskmaster in here, along with Killmonger. Like, this team is basically set up for Taskmaster to be in it, but there's no Taskmaster. Red Stars galore, like huge numbers, great big powerful team. I think Killmonger should probably be switched to a Raider since Taskmaster isn't here, or maybe paired up on a Wakandans team depending on where Abe is at with the War Dogs. I'm going to assume that this was originally built for Taskmaster to be on it, and that this is not an intentional waste of ISOs after the fact. And I think he just removed Taskmaster for the Underworld team. So for other people, this is just, you're blowing up your wallet on this one. Don't do it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and say this is probably a B for me. I, I it's, it's just a huge number. It doesn't have the kind of synergy and power you need it to really be effective. I think a lot was wasted on those blue ISOs and the gear and everything else. 
But uh, hopefully that Underworld team is amazing, I guess. All right, team number three is the Black Order. I don't like the placement. The idea here is that Corvus Glaive is next to Cull Obsidian and goes invisible, stopping chain attacks from going through. Yeah, that's a thing to do, but it's not the best choice. The best choice is to put your Thanos next to him. Now, that's a seven red Thanos. Goes next to Cull Obsidian. Splash damage hits Thanos. Cull Obsidian retaliates. The rest of the placement doesn't matter so much. I hate healer on Ebony Maw. That was a thing that people did during a mirror match for Arena way back ages ago, and it shouldn't happen. There is no healing in Ebony Maw's kit. He should be a skirmisher for the focus boost. That's going to help him with some of the passive stuff in his kit and other things that he's doing, stripping and um, all sorts of stuff. So let's change him to a skirmisher. Well, don't change him at this point. I don't think this team is really worth making any changes, but for those of you who want to build Ebony Maw, go skirmisher. And then we have three strikers and only one skirmisher on the team. That's not enough vulnerables for strikers. So we either need to change Cull Obsidian to a raider or a skirmisher, or we need to change Thanos to a raider, possibly a skirmisher. Doesn't really matter. Actually, both of those characters have a lot of synergy or, or have an equal amount of synergy, I should say, with all five ISOs. But right now, we just got too many strikers and not enough vulnerables getting out on the field. So we got to do something about that. I would say probably since Cull Obsidian is still in the green, switching him over, that's going to be the least wasteful thing to do. So ISO change, placement change. Otherwise, this is a one million Black Order team and it's kind of crushing it. So not too bad. I'm going to go B minus on that. Team number four. Look at that Black Bolt, would you? Seven red stars, gear tier 16. He is burping everyone off the field. That's crazy. So we have two strikers, three people putting out vulnerables. Colston opening up with that Raider ISO 8. Then you've got Yo-Yo. She's got the Skirmisher. She could also be a Raider. I like her on this team as a Skirmisher. you got plenty of vulnerables going on the field, so you might as well give her that focus boost to make sure the offense down lands on the opposing player's turn. Kestrel is double tapping into those vulnerables. You could make Kestrel a raider. So when she does her opening move, which is an alt by the AI, she's going to alt first. That can crit and just delete people. But with all these vulnerables on the field and happening before she takes that turn, there's a good chance she's going to be double tapping into some of those vulnerables anyways. I kind of like this setup. I think it's pretty good. It's an older team. It's totally beatable, but it's a big team and it's done right. I'm going to give this one an A. Over here, we have Doom on the Brotherhood team. This is another older defense. It's still effective, but I think that at Abe's level, people are gonna know how to beat this. I'm wondering if he's looking at what teams they're using to beat his Helicarrier, and he's trying to soak up certain things with this. Uh, like a Zemo factor, I believe, is what we used to use to ruin this team, and it worked really well. Now, Big Brotherhood, Lots of strikers, not quite enough vulnerables. Normally I get upset when I see Blob on defense as a striker, but Doom is putting out Disrupt, Magneto's putting out Disrupt, and you've got somewhat of enough vulnerables going out there. I'd like to see either Juggernaut as a Raider putting out enough vulnerables that makes that striker effective, or you could consider putting in Pyro instead of Juggernaut. Now, Pyro's gonna put out lots of those disrupts. And the reason you want disrupt is so that when Blob retaliates or attacks into a vulnerable with disrupt, he gets all of his effects, uh, rewinding turn meter, adding slow, all that stuff that happens as a striker. Otherwise, if you don't wanna do that, making Blob a skirmisher so that when he retaliates, he places vulnerables out there is the way to go. So we either change Juggernaut's ISO to uh, Raider or we change Blob's ISO to skirmisher. I vote you change Juggernaut to a skirmisher or try Pyro as a Raider. That could be fun too, clumping everybody together and hitting them all with those fiery blasts. And the way Abe likes to upgrade some ineffectual characters, that might be fun. Like people could be surprised at how hard those bleeds really tear apart a team with Pyro. Everything else here is okay. It's an older team. I'd like to some sort of a tweak to those ISOs. We're going to go for a B on that team and team number six. Somebody got excited when MODOK show came out on Hulu and I think he was ready for that MODOK rumor we had going around and jumped the gun on it or maybe he was just excited for the red stars that he has on this team so I, I like Doc Ock in here I do I think Doc Ock's a great pick for here but I think we need a major placement 
uh, adjustment. Remember that aim security heals to adjacent. So we should probably put Graviton to the outside with aim security in the center. And yeah, that'll probably be good enough, I guess. You could probably tweak with a little bit more. I'm not sure if Monstrosity is worth getting the healing adjacent. You might have try and put uh, Scientist Supreme or Graviton adjacent to aim security. But just get aim security off the outside so you're not wasting half of the healing tendencies of that character. Doc Ock does deflex to adjacent. That'll really help keep aim security alive longer. So that's pretty good. You also have the healing coming out of Doc Ock and stuff. This is an old and busted team. No one should be building this to one million. But hey, when Modok does come out, Abe's going to be laughing at all of us because he'll be ready for it. Let's see. Isos. We can do Fortifier on aim security. I think Healer might be a better choice. Healer on Doc Ock is the way to go. Striker on Graviton is pretty good. Skirmisher on Monstrosity. I'm not sure about that. He is kind of a damage dealer and he's more single target. So I think Striker might be a better choice for aim monstrosity and then healer on Scientist Supreme. Problem is we're not going to have a lot of vulnerables out there. Like right now you've got one Skirmisher, one Striker, and I'm considering making more people Striker and less so. Yeah, maybe we could change Graviton to a Raider and Monstrosity to a Striker, or maybe just leave it the way it is. I don't know. Maybe that's the best we're going to get. I'm going to go... I mean, this is a lot of wasted resources on this team. You know, it shouldn't be built this, but it shouldn't be used, frankly. Um, but it's fun anyway, it's fun. So I'm gonna just go with a B. Let's focus on the placement change first and foremost. Team number seven is the Marauders. We put Sabretooth in here in place of Mystique. He's gonna be doing a lot more damage, helping this team get the kills faster, which is a good thing because your strike is a little bit weak compared to the rest of the team. I mean, you got your 16 on most of them. So Strife is supposed to be as big or bigger than everybody else on the team so that he holds. That taunt comes up and he holds it. And the other people have time to get going. So you got Sabretooth in there as a seven red with Raider jumping around, critting in people and just tearing it up. So that's good. I don't like Fortifier on Strife. His kit does everything that Fortifier does. So change him to pretty much anything else. I like Raiders or uh, Skirmisher on him. Probably a good way to go. The other ISOs are great. Uh, the placement's okay. I would put Emma next to Strife, actually. I kind of like Emma there. But Sabretooth does a lot of self-healing as well. Emma heals a little bit better. So it's your choice. I'm not going to dock you for that placement change, though. But we definitely need to do something about the ISO on Strife. So I'm going to go A- minus on this team. It's not a great team. I don't like it. It's older. I, I don't think that it holds near as well as it used to. It was, it was hot for a minute, but not anymore. Team number eight is Gamma. Gamma on defense, and we did find a counter today for this. It is the Tangled Undying. I use Dormammu as the fifth, but we do believe that you could use something else if you play it better than I did, and you can beat this team. Honestly, the, the Tangled Undying worked really well against this in war. It's that, or you do some sort of a mirror to it. The placement needs some adjustment. Now, the way the charges work on Hulk doesn't work the way it reads. It's pretty complicated, so I'm just going to tell you the placement. It's going to be Hulk, She-Hulk on this team. It's going to be Abomination, then Brawn, and then Red Hulk off to the end. We want Red Hulk off to the end because of the Dorm Doom and Doom Omega Red counters that are... No, wait, that's going to be Crucible. Those are the Crucible counters. They don't work in war. Never mind. But I still think you should probably put Red Hulk all the way out to the other side. But we don't want him in between the two taunting tanks because when Gamma members get hit, he gets one charge. When he is hit directly, he gets two charges. That's kind of it. So there's no point in putting him next to a tank that's taunting because they're going to be hitting the taunting tank and he's going to get the same amount of charges no matter what and taking the splash damage, which doesn't really change much for him. So I like putting it Hulk, She-Hulk, Abomination, and then the rest of them is kind of the way it should go. Uh, you got a striker on Red Hulk. A lot of people are starting to lean more into that Raider, but I'm not going to dock you. Striker could still be good. I wouldn't go 2.4. I wouldn't go blue 4 ISO until we know how that Apocalypse team is going to play out. Save your ISOs. Well, we'll see. There might not be any saving left when we get to Team 10. It's kind of funny. Okay. 
This is fine. Another option is to make them all healer. That was a fun one to do in Crucible. These teams do work very, very differently, whether they are in Crucible or War. I'm going to go with a B plus on this. Just a placement tweak is the important one. Over here, Team 9. This is something pretty kind of clever. You've got Weaver giving him cover, but before that, I think Icarus might pop off. I'm not really sure. That's 20% turn meter from Chavez. I think the thing to do here is swap places with Cersei and Weaver, making sure Weaver goes off first, giving you those misses, for lack of a better term, her little mechanic with the charges. Make her go first, and then Icarus will go and then Cersei will go later, rewinding all that turn meter and stuff like that. You could replace Surfer with a Thanos in here, giving him lots of energy. That helps. You could also put in Death Pool in here, too. That's another option. Surfer's not a bad choice, though. That's a 7 red, gear 16, 318,000 Surfer. It's crushing it. You have three Skirmishers, two Strikers. That's acceptable. Surfer also works well as a Raider on defense. Not going to dock it because you got plenty of of vulnerables i like weaver as a striker so for me if this was mine i would swap cersei and weaver i would make weaver a striker and i'd make surfer a raider and i think that would give you plenty of vulnerables uh weaver going into those vulnerables with her double tap putting all those bleeds and stuff really starts to add up she's pretty powerful so that's my suggestion this isn't terribly wrong here I just think that there's a little bit better way to do it. I don't know if bringing 99 into the equation is worth it. So for those of you who don't want to build any more of the Tangled Web members than you absolutely have to, this is a pretty good choice. I kind of like this. Also, I think that the YA team is working quite well on offense, even without America Chavez. America Chavez is just on that team for damage on offense because she doesn't do the speed up mechanic on offense. So what I'm saying here is this is a pretty good build. I like it. I'm going to give it a B plus. I think there are some things we could do better. Maybe some different people in here, but all in all, it's pretty good. And finally, I would like everyone to take note of the huge ass guardians in room number 10. 1.6 million, all seven by seven, all gear tier 16, except for Thor, who is gear tier 17 and absolutely wasting damage potential as a striker. We need to be doing a raider. I have talked far and wide with other content creators, with uh, chat and with my cats, and they all agree he should definitely be a raider, not a striker. The reason is he crits on his passive. That's an AOE that starts popping off a lot. He's gonna be critting almost all the time. Like they get quite the, the bonus to crit chance and they get a substantial bonus in damage when that crit takes place. A lot of people are saying Raider on everybody and for Scourges, you wanna make Valkyrie and Mighty Thor Strikers. That's kind of what I'm hearing out there. I think that's a good way to go. A lot of people are defending Sif as a skirmisher, and what we kind of decided is you can make Sif anything you want. Not a ton of synergy with anything. It's kind of wherever you want her to be. If you want more vulnerables on the field, make her a skirmisher or a raider. If you want her to be trying to heal the team a little bit more, there's a good case to be making her as a healer, as a fortifier, whatever you want. She does have some adjacent attacks, she also has single target attacks. She's really slow, but here's the thing. She's the fastest member of the team, believe it or not. Yes, the tank goes first. So who cares what you make Sif? But the important thing is we do need to make Thor a striker. The DPS out of this team is greatly affected by making him a raider instead of a striker. And I basically have crowdsource that information to come to that. I know Abe was asking me specifically about this. He gave his reasoning. It's very logical to make him a striker with that 20% damage of bonus, but the math points to Raider. That's just where it lands, and a lot of people are agreeing on that. But hey, it's your game. Play it the way you want to play it. I'm just giving my advice out there. So if you want to make him a, a, a green fortifier and make Heimdall, you know, a blue four healer, whatever. Do whatever makes you happy. Play the game your way. I'm just giving my advice out there. I think that, that the amazing part of this is the 1.6 million. That is just a killer Asgardian team. And I'm kind of curious, as Pathfinder asked, 
How come you didn't do better in the Red Hulk Scourge event with an Asgardian team this big? <laughs> Anyways, Abe, thank you very much. This is one of the most interesting defenses I've had in a while. If you want your defense, whether it be War or Crucible featured on Defense Up, links are in the description. Remember, guys, don't just have a good game. Be good to yourselves and others, too. And I'll see you next time. By the way, I'm going to give this one an A-. Bye, guys.